and we're going to talk about this lab and what you'll be doing in it. The left hand side is for the motor control class and the right hand side is reserved for the PLC class. Inside areas in red again are reserved for the PLC and the green areas are for your motor control class. On the front you'll inventory everything and you'll remove these items that are inside the green box. Now with anything, remember you have to assume these components are energized. Unplug your station and get the meter out and verify that it's de-energized before proceeding any further. Inside you're going to inventory everything. You won't be removing everything, but you will be inventorying everything. Do not remove the items in red, which are all the PLC areas. And then the transformer and variable speed drive. And the power entry down in the lower right. Our input power is 120 volts, 240 volts, single phase. And you see it enters in here through the bottom and then comes on up around through here. Our incoming ground, our incoming neutral, one line in red and the other line in black. It goes through the disconnect, comes out, and then connects up to this two pole breaker. The PLC side is on the right and that goes directly on up to the PLC circuit breaker up on the top up there. Your 120 volt supply will be on the left hand side and these breakers are what you'll be using. There's some connections here for the variable speed drive and you can take these off and rewire them when you get to that point in the lab. You see where it comes in up there. I'm going to show you how to take off the circuit breakers now. They're DIN rail mounted and you pull the little tabs down and it pops right out. You should never force anything. You should never need to force anything with these. They're all very simple. If you're forcing them, you're doing it wrong. You see I pull the tabs down and then it'll pop onto the DIN rail. That's D-I-N rail. Pops on there and then just snap them up and it's good to go. Next is the reversing starter that's shown here. You push down and pull up on the bottom or pull out and it just comes right off. Those little clips hold them onto the DIN rail. The overload relays are connected to the contactors through these screws that are at the bottom of the contactor. You want to loosen those screws there or just loosen the screws and the overload relays will fall off. Again, those go in, put it in from the top, push down, and it'll snap in place. I'll take it off again to show you. Push down, pull the bottom out, and it snaps right in. Okay, make sure it's all in there, and when you touch it, it shouldn't fall off. Now the timing have sockets and relays, and sometimes they're a little bit more fussy but again they have a little tab on the bottom pull down on the tab and it releases that socket from the DIN rail and go pop it back in and sometimes you might have to pull down on the tab to get it to snap in there you go you see that circuit breakers same thing little little tab down there on the bottom it pops right off and this one goes in, little assistance with the tab, and it snaps in place and it's not coming off. The control relay has a socket, has an orange tab there, pull the tab down, the socket pops off. And you can see the tab moving, and it will pop it back in. In that case, it didn't need any assistance, it just snapped right back in place. Now the terminals, I started working on this 
and the end stop needs a little bit of a little bit more loosening than what I did so I could come back and loosen it some more and you can see the clips that hold it on to the rail there and now these terminals some of them were installed right side up and the other ones were installed upside down so I'm taking them all off and the little clips that work with your screwdriver should be on the bottom in this case somewhere on the top and somewhere on the bottom but they all should be the same and there's a metal side that was a little blurry there and an insulated side and it should be all set together so that you could hold them together and all the metal ends are facing the same direction there's the tab I'm talking about with the screwdriver and I'm going to put it in and you'll see it just snaps right back into place Okay, I'm going to take some more, take these off, and I'm going to go through this a few times, on and off, and everything, till they, till I finally get them all in the right direction. And you see, I'm not using a screwdriver there. I'm applying pressure, and they'll pop off. It's easy to do one at a time, but if you have a whole rail of them, that's not going to be that easy. I have them all set all in the same direction okay now I'll just go snap them in sometimes you can snap an entire block in like that I'm putting them in one at a time to show you how simply they snap in place and then down at the bottom I'm going to swap out the screwdriver here because a little wider screwdriver works easier with these and you can see how easy they just pop off and they fall out. Here's the end stop. Put it up against it. Tighten it up. Make a nice firm pack there. Okay, transformer is going to stay put. Don't take it out. And its connection dia diagram is right there on top of the transformer. Get real close and look at it. And you see a 120 volt connection and a 240 volt connection on the primary. And then a 12 and 24 on the secondary. In the top terminals, the outside terminals are for wiring. The inside terminals are for the fuses. Again, the outside terminals here on the bottom are for wiring. Inside terminals are for fuse mounts. The reversing starter is made up of two contactors, mechanical interlock, auxiliary contacts, and two overload relays. And I there's the auxiliary contact block and that's the mechanical interlock and then the overload relay down there one set of contactor and overload relay makes up a starter here's your contacts for your push buttons and your switches they come off quite easily the greens are normally open the reds are normally closed just loosen this up and it comes off the back then you can loosen the back mounting screws and these are called bayonet mounts it's a little twist lock and you can see it goes in twist and lock okay twist and lock all right and put that in it twist lock hold there hold it nice and level and then tighten it up. This is where a partner would be nice to be holding one side and holding the door while you tighten this up. I'm trying to do all three things here at the same time. Okay. Now the contacts go on. You see the two locator pins. Line those up. Drop it in there and tighten it up. And now these switch box here 
You can put two sets on there. You can put a normally open set, normally closed set, or two normally open sets, whatever you want to work out there. And then you can also stack sets on top of each other. I've seen as many as four or five stacks together. Here's your limit switches. The limit switches are the same part number. The actuators, roller actuator, actuator and whisker actuator are different part numbers. And they open up with a screwdriver, just pop it open, just like that. Pretty simple. And you can see here 13 and 14 are the normally open contacts, and 21 and 22 are the normally closed contacts. Up on the top we've got a little light tower. These are LED light towers. I was able to reach up and take it off without a ladder. And if you look really close you'll see an arrow on each one and that shows you where the locators are. And you line up the two straight lines. Okay, now you can open it up. And it goes back the opposite. Line the straight lines together. Push and twist. Again, twist they're lined up so now they're open and again line them up and twist twist and line up open okay and there's your part number right there each colored item will have a different part number again line up the lines twist and it's good to go now make sure you get a ladder to get yourself back up there No standing on the workbenches or on the stools. Each box has a motor on the top and that's dedicated to the PLC half of the box. And then you have your own motor down below. And your inventory, don't forget things like the, the little close nipples and the wire routing harnesses. I should say wire routing. Got your motor up there. All your switches. Transformers. Power supply. Circuit breakers. Two pole, three pole circuit breakers. Disconnect. Terminals. Grounding blocks timers and timer sockets, the starter, reversing starter, all the terminals, control relay and its socket. You got the PLC right there, more terminal blocks and grounding blocks. Then you've got the part number for the enclosure up there and then don't forget you got to get a part number for the back panel and you can get that by starting with the enclosure part number. Down below there's a motor for the motor control section and you've got the cable wiring trays don't forget the wiring trays there. Okay that'll pretty much do it you should be ready to get to work so jump in get your tools get your partner and let's get going on this lab.